All right, this is 7.1 example two, and, and students don't like these questions, and I get that, but this is a very large part of math, is modeling a situation with mathematical function. Granted, we usually use technology to do it because it does it a lot better than we do, um, but certainly this is a created question so that we can do it. The one thing that I'd like to really, really hammer home is that you know typically they give you points. All three of these points have to be on the same curve. So understanding that that is the X and the Y coordinate, I can write, you know, maybe three different equations that we could solve. If we think about this as Y equals some C value to the power of X, then we could say that 16 is equal to C to the power of negative two. So that's using my first point right here. I could also say that four is equal to C to the power of negative one. And that's my second point. And then the third one would be that one is equal to C to the power of zero. Now this third one is an issue because the reality is that anything to the power of zero is equal to one. So we would just get that C is an element to the real. You can pick any real number and that'll be on that curve. That sucks because you can't pick any real number and have you know the other two be maintained. Neither of these is wrong. Um, it doesn't matter what you want to do. I really like doing both to show how they work. The biggest concept is that when we write a solution, like if I were to write that C is equal to four, which it isn't, I don't think, um, actually, okay, it isn't, good. Um, that's fine, but it's important to understand that really what I'm saying behind the scenes is that c to the power of one is equal to four. So in order to solve these equations, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply exponents on both sides in order to manipulate them to get c to the power of one is equal to a number or a fraction or whatever that is. And I'm gonna do that in two steps over here. I'm gonna get rid of the negative first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both sides of the equation. I'm going to put them to the power of negative one. Now, when you put a power on a power, as I did on the right-hand side here, it multiplies. So this becomes C squared. On the left-hand side, 16 to the power of negative one is one over 16 to the power of positive one, but we don't write that. Now, if I have that one sixteenth is equal to C squared, the one thing that this question doesn't state, but it should in 30-1, this is a restriction on the base of our functions. And the reason why that's so important is if C squared is equal to 1 16th, then if I just gave you that, you need to understand that C could be positive or negative 1 fourth. But because C is the base of an exponential function in 30-1, C can't be negative. So what I'm gonna do here in order to isolate C completely is I am just going to take the positive square root on both sides. Taking the square root of that fraction is root one over root 16. Now we just have C and I'll put to the power of one there and I get that one fourth is equal to C. You know, not brutal, not the easiest thing to solve by any means. What this does mean though, is that if I got C is equal to one fourth there, I better get C is equal to one fourth than what I just kind of boxed in in blue there. And we actually get there in one step. What I'm gonna do is take both sides of the equation and apply the exponent negative one onto them. Four to the power of negative one is one fourth and c to the negative one to the power of negative one is c to the positive one and in both of these solutions i get that c is equal to one fourth now before you think you know what about the third one um one fourth is a real number so we're good to go now to check this please don't feel like it's bad to type into your calculator y1 is equal to in a bracket one divided by four to the power of x and if you make the window settings the same you will see this graph all right, alternatively, if you really don't like decimals for some reason, you could put that Y1 is equal to 0 0.25 to the power of X. I would still recommend you put a bracket around that base, right? One quarter and 0 0.25 are the same. Be careful with that though. If you get, you know, one of those fractions that, you know, is still rational because all fractions are, but if it has a repeating decimal, like one third, for example, you do not want to write that in your calculator. Your calculator will not recognize, you know, 0.3 is one third because 0.3 is three tenths. So if we have a nice terminating decimal, like one fourth or one half or one eighth or one tenth or, you know, so many other examples, it's fine to use decimal, but you have to get comfortable enough with your calculator that you can deal with those kind of fractional values as well. So I would argue that this is a better answer for that question. All right, so that's example two and one left.